Welcome back to the Mental Dietitian Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Lynch Potter, and today is episode 88. And I'm excited about this one. I was thinking about what am I going to share with this episode? And I'll tell you a little bit about what's been going on with me lately and tell you why I read this book and tell you why it's my favorite book and then share the lessons from this book. And I've mentioned this book before. I've read it probably 20 times now. And it's a very short book. I think it's only, how many pages are you, Mr. Book? You are 127 pages. So what's been going on with me lately? I have been winning in a few areas of my life, but not all areas of my life, especially financially. I haven't been doing that well at work lately. And... It's been taking a toll on my confidence. And it really is, it really has shown to me the importance of winning in all areas of your, of your life, every single area. And winning can mean different things for different people. Winning could be getting out of bed this morning if you're chronically depressed. That's a fucking win. You won. Winning could be making yourself a really nice, healthy meal when you told yourself you weren't going to eat out anymore. You're a winner. You're winning. Winning for somebody else might be acquiring a $100 million company and buying a Lamborghini. Everybody has their own definitions of winning. Don't let society's definition overrule your little wins that you get throughout the day, which you can start stacking to maybe one day in 20, 30 years, you do buy a $100 million company if that's what your goal is, if that's what you want to do. But I haven't been winning. I wasn't winning at work. <clears throat> I had a lot of anxiety, a lot of old stuff coming around, uh, coming up around money, not feeling safe. A lot of stuff from my childhood coming up. And it was very interesting. And the last day of the month, so the 30th, the second last day of the month, I had basically made no money. And I'm in commission sales. And I have a trip to Austin, Texas in a week. I leave next Wednesday with Lexi. It's going to be an amazing time now. Before, it was going to be a stressful time because of the time off work and things like that. And then uh, the missed income there and then not having a good month this month. And the last day of the month, I made basically all my money. Made five figures a healthy, healthy five figures in one day. Is it five figures or four figures? Four figures? A healthy four figures, should I say, almost five figures in a day. And what that did to me is it immediately changed my perspective. I went from very scarcity-minded to abundant-minded in one day. And I was like, okay, that's an issue. It's a good thing, but it's also an issue that your mind can switch so quickly. And I wanted to share what I believe got me to that point to receive that blessing. I got a blessing. I had some a miracle deal come through that paid me a massive commission, and it just came out of nowhere. I got the lead that morning, and they were sold in an hour on a brand new truck. And it was done in an hour. And I was like, this is very interesting because every deal before that this month was a grind. People with bad credit, people that couldn't afford things. A lot of people are very scared right now when it comes to finances. There's a lot of fear in the world. And I started reading this wonderful little book, which has been a little friend for me for many years when I feel like I'm in a dark place. It's funny, on my desk, if you guys know what Lord of the Rings is, then you probably know what this is. This I have on my desk, and it's funny, I just said that. If you know what it is, I don't need to tell you what it is. And if you don't know what it is, then I'm going to move on and not explain it. But this book has been a little light for me in dark places, just like that little thing on my desk from the Lord of the Rings movie. This is the book, The Go-Giver, 
I've mentioned it many, many times, but I'm going to, going to go into depth about it today. The Go-Giver, a simple story about a powerful business idea. And this book has been around for quite a while now. And like I said, I've probably read it about 20 times. The reason I've read it 20 times is it instantly changes your perspective about, especially if you're in sales or business, about how you actually make money. And most people, when it comes to money, especially sales, selling anything, the business, any business needs to sell a product or a service, right? And if you really want to make a lot of money in this world, like a lot, you want to make tens of thousands of dollars a month, hundreds of thousands of dollars a month, you are going to have to be involved in the sales of a product or a service. That's just the truth. Unless you are highly skilled like a soccer player or a UFC fighter at the peak of their game, but very few people get paid that in this world. And there's a lot of other factors that go into it, like genetics and things like that. When it comes to sales or building a business, it's based on your effort. It's based on your effort more than anything else. You could be five foot five, never play in the NBA, but you could make so much money that you could buy an NBA team one day because of your effort. Anyway, this book has five basic principles. It's a story about a young go-getter. He's in an office. He's trying to hit his third uh, third quarter quota. And he's trying to figure out a way of, he's figuring it out. He's like, how do I get this? And I've felt this way before. I've felt like it's the end of the month. I haven't made any money. I'm like, how can I, how can I figure this out? What, what am I not seeing? And your brain goes into solution mode. It finds solutions. It's constantly looking. And he ends up getting a connection to this powerful business magnate. And he goes and visits him every day at lunchtime and learns, learns, uh, the, 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 learns the five stratospheric laws of success. And I'm going to share those laws with you today. Go read the book, but I'm going to share you a little summary and explain to you why I believe they're so powerful, why I believe these principles could make you unbelievably successful in every area of your life, your relationships, your friendships, your health and fitness, spirituality. You are just a hyper successful human in every area of life if you apply these principles. So the first law, the first stratospheric law of success is the law of value. Your true worth it is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in payment. What does that mean? Let's read that again. Your true worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in payment. When I think of that, I apply it to what I do, which is selling cars. And I also obviously coach people on the side. That's, that's, I'm a communicator. I have a podcast. I work in sales and I coach people. And I used to think that I was in one of those three little boxes, but I zoomed out. I'm actually a communicator. So I'm just communicating in different arenas because I love communicating. So for me, what is the true, your true worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in payment. For me in the sales arena, it is providing such great customer service and such amazing value to the person that when they are paying me for that service, say this person's buying a truck right now. I was like, you know what? We're going to throw in some winter tires for you. Brand new winter tires so you don't have to worry about it. Plus, we're going to fill it up with a full tank of gas when it gets there. And plus, you live in the Yukon in the middle of nowhere. Would you like some groceries? thrown in from a Costco because I know that your groceries cost a lot up there. How's that sound? Oh my God. Oh, I, I, wow. Other car dealerships, other people in sales might be like, they might not throw in any of that stuff. And does it cost money out of the deal? Yes. But is it providing more value to that person? Yes. Which means they refer people which means 
in the long run, if you're playing the long game in any any industry, by by always giving more value than you take in payment, you'll always win. So that's law number one. So how where can you think in your life that your true worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you take in payment? How much more value can we provide? Not just enough. If you're selling a product or a service, how much more can you give? What things can you give? Maybe with my coaching clients, I could give them little little things here and there, maybe a worksheet to fill out, maybe a maybe podcast to listen to. I plan on building a course one day, access free access to my course, free access to my Facebook page. These are all things that I'm thinking of. Always providing as much value as you possibly can so that when people are paying you for services or products, they're like, well, this is totally worth it. Why? Like This is just totally worth it. But your focus is on giving the value, not how much you can receive in payment because the payment's going to come. It's going to come as long as you're providing such massive amounts of value and service and being a good human being that that's what your focus is. So that's law number one. Amazing law. I love that one. I love all of them. I get really excited talking about them. The second law. So the first law determines how much you're worth, right? Your true worth is determined by how much more you give in payment, given value that you take in payment. The second law is your income, like the law of compensation, how much you actually get paid. Your income is determined by how many people you serve and how well you serve them. So in this chapter of this book, I wanted to share this, a little quote from this book. I'll read it to you. It says, your income is determined by how many people you serve and how well you serve them. She paused, then added, or to put it another way, your compensation is directly proportional to how many lives you touch. Nicole sat and quietly finished her sandwich, giving Joe, the go-getter, the one who's trying to make this quota, the main character, which is Joe, giving Joe a chance to let the law of compensation sink in. After a brief silence, he began thinking out loud. You know, I always thought it seemed so unfair how movie stars and top athletes pulled down those huge salaries or how CEOs or corporate founders could marshal such gigantic earnings. No offense. He looked at the CEO. She graciously nodded and gestured for him to go on. But people who were doing such great work, such noble work like school teachers, never got paid what they're worth. It always seemed arbitrary. But what you're saying is it's not a question of their value. It's a question of impact. And when I read that, I was like, wow, because I had that same thought too. There's so many people doing good work in the world, firefighters, doctors, uh, like any first responder, but why don't they get paid so much money? It's because of the law of compensation. Your income is determined by how many people you serve and how well you serve them. So if you want to make more money, how do you do it? You need to touch more people. If I work in sales, if I want to make more money, I need to get a hold of more people. Just like Grant Cardone says, if you ever followed any of his work, he said, nobody knows who you are. If nobody knows who you are, then how can you expect to make massive amounts of income? And the law of compensation explains it very simply. Your income is determined by how many people you serve and how well you serve them. How many people are you connecting with? How many people you're in touch with? If you run a gym, Your income is determined by how many members are in that gym and how each one of those members feel when they go into your gym. That's law, law number two. Let's go to law number three. And these all tie into each other. If you think about them, the first law was a law of value of of your worth, which is your potential earnings. The second law is how much you can actually make by how many people you touch. The third law, the law of influence. Your influence is determined by how abundantly you place other people's interests first. The chapter of this book talks about having a walking army 
of networkers, people that know you, love you, trust you. Not somebody you keep score with, like, hey, Bob, I got you this time, so you get me next time. That's not somebody that is part of your network. That's a creditor. Somebody that's part of your network is somebody that will always have you in mind when having a conversation with somebody will always be like, yeah, you need to talk to this guy and not expect anything back. It's it's like the what Zig Ziglar said. If you know who Zig Ziglar is, you said, you're, I think he said, he helped enough people get what, what do you say? He said it right here. You can really have everything in life you want if you just help enough people get what they want. Simple as that. If you help other people get what they want, you will get what you want. And that's the law of influence. Your, your influence is determined by how abundantly you place other people's interests first. That's the third law. This law, every time I read the chapter in this book, I always get a little bit emotional because it's something that I struggled with for many, many years. And I still struggle with it sometimes but I'm getting a lot better. And that is the fourth law, the law of authenticity. The most valuable gift you have to offer is yourself. And for so, so many years of my life, I thought that that gift that I had to offer wasn't a gift at all. And so many people think that. You've heard me talk about it. I believe I call it the great psychological pandemic of humanity, which is not enoughness. I don't know if that's already been coined, but I was thinking about it during the pandemic and I was like, what is what is like the the greater issue in the world? I think the greater issue in the world is the world, society, somebody growing up told you somewhere that you weren't good enough how you were, which is fucking bullshit. But you have to learn that on your own. You have to get there on your own. The law of authenticity, the most valuable gift you have to offer is yourself. No, I know it sounds cliche. People, like, and people call people snowflakes and things like that. But in reality, we are all snowflakes. We are all amazingly unique. Nobody has ever been you. Think about the miracle that it took for you to exist. Let's go back. You got your parents. You got your grandparents. You got those that the great grandparents. So we've already gone parents two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, one twenty-eight, two fifty-six, five twelve, one twenty, one thousand and twenty-four. How many generations back did I go? I don't know. But let's just say I went back seven, eight generations. A thousand people had to exist and had to make certain decisions. Some of them died on battlefields. Some of them survived illness. We're going back hundreds, if not thousands of years to think about these people, say four, five hundred, maybe a thousand years. Think about how harsh life is. Especially, like, you think it's harsh now with what's going on with Israel, Palestine, Ukraine, Russia. Think about how harsh that is. Think about what it was like 500 to 1,000 years ago. And each one of those beautifully orchestrated lives that had to get to the point where right now you're listening to this. And you don't think you can do things in life? You're not an accident. You're here for a reason. It's mathematically almost impossible that you exist, but you do. So why would you be anybody else? And that's the law of authenticity, the fourth law. You want to be huge in this world? Be you. Don't be anybody else. And this is the fifth law. This is the one that I've used this exercise. I'm going to read you this chapter from the book. And the law, the fifth law, the fifth and final law is the law of receptivity. The key to effective giving is to stay open to receiving. And I was reading this book, man. I was reading this book for the past like week 
every night before I go to bed, putting some good input in my brain before I go to bed, hoping that I could turn my month around. And on the last day, I was open to receiving and it came through and I had a pretty good month. My income tripled in one day. So I'm going to read you a beautiful part of this book, which is an exercise I've actually done with people that think that giving is better than receiving. All right. You ready? You ready for this amazing part of the book? Where do I start? Here we go. Pinda, who's the business magnate, Pinda interrupted his train of thought before it even got started. Don't think about it, Joe. Don't try to remember. Just tell me. When I say giving, what's the first thing that leaps to mind? It's better to give than it is to receive. Exactly. It's better to give than to receive, right? If you're a good person, this is what you do. You give, good people give, and don't think of receiving. But you, you think about receiving all the time. You can't help it, which means you're probably not a very good person. So why bother trying? All this stuff, all these laws that Aaron just read you, I just added that in there. All this stuff sounds great for some people, people like me or the CEO or the other person you met, but not for you. That's just not who you are. Is that how it is, Joe? Joe sighed, something like that. Pindar looked at him. He said, I want you to try something for me. I'm going to count to 30. And while I count, I want you to slowly exhale. That's all. Just exhale and don't stop. Now take a good breath in first. So you have plenty of air. Okay. Now breathe in and just try and exhale and go. Pindar reached nine, then 12. Joe straightened up and abruptly drew a big gasping breath. Couldn't get to 30? Pinder looked at him. What would you think if I told you it has been medically proven that it's healthier for you to exhale than it is to inhale? Would that make a difference? Puzzled, Joe shook his head again. No, of course not. You can't go on exhaling forever, no matter what argument anybody gives you. What if I told you it's better for your heart to relax than to contract? Just to keep opening up without squeezing down again, would you give it a try? It's ridiculous, right? Of course it is. And so is that bit of traditional wisdom nonsense that you and I and everybody else has had drummed into us. It's not better to give than it is to receive. It's insane to try to give and not receive. Trying not to receive is not only foolish, it's arrogant. When somebody gives you a gift, what gives you the right to refuse it? To deny their right to give. Receiving is a natural result of giving. If you give and then try to stop the receiving that comes back, you're like King Canute watching the tide roll out and commanding it not to come back in. It has to come back in, just as your heart has to contract after relaxing. At this instant, all around the world, all of humanity is breathing in oxygen and breathing out carbon dioxide. So is the rest of the animal kingdom. And right now, at this instant, all over the globe, the billions and billions of organisms of plant of the plant kingdom are doing the exact opposite. They're breathing in carbon dioxide and breathing out oxygen. Their giving is our receiving, and our giving is their receiving. In fact, every giving can happen only because it is also a receiving. There's so many people that need to listen to what I just said and listen and read that book. I worked with a client, beautiful man that was stuck there. He was stuck giving, giving, giving. And he was stuck in a place where he didn't feel like he deserved to receive what life was trying. Life was trying to give him a beautiful opportunity, great money, a great job opportunity, everything he wanted, the job of his dreams. And he almost sabotaged it because he wasn't open to receiving, because he thought it was wrong. Because somebody told him in the past that put everybody else's interest first, don't worry about yourself. And that's not how the world works. 
And I did that exercise with him. I got him to breathe out. I said, don't breathe in. Just keep breathing out. Just give, give, give. Don't you breathe in. Don't you take. That's insane. That's insane. So I hope these five stratospheric laws of success helped you today. And just as much I, as I enjoyed reading them, it's about applying them. It's in that book, after every single time he learned each one of these lessons, he had to apply it that day. So where can you apply this? It could be buying coffee for a coworker. It could be stop keeping score with your partner. Be like, oh, you did this. No, I should do this. Well, I got the groceries, so you get them next time. Stop, stop being a creditor. You owe me this. Just a place that just, just go do the right thing and don't keep score with it. How can you apply these lessons in your life? How can you be open to receiving and not push it away? So many people have that relationship with money, including myself, is that I want so much of it. I want this abundance, but I'm scared of it. So why would something I'm scared of go anywhere near me? So many people want this love and connection with a spouse, but they're so standoffish because they don't trust anybody. So why would they ever have that deep loving connection if you don't trust anybody? It's the funny thing about life. A little bit of opposite is always tucked in to the truth. It's like the, the great paradox, like the yin and yang. There's a little bit of evil in every good and there's a little bit of good in every evil. And all the favorite movies we love to watch have it. Think about Harry Potter and his relationship with Voldemort, yin yang. Think about Lord of the Rings. The, the ring is the yin and the yang. Frodo is such a good human being, good hobbit, should I say. And then the, the ring is so evil. And it's everywhere. All of these lessons are everywhere, but a lot of us just don't see it. And my gift of communication is to share these things that I see, the way that I see the world, and hopefully you get something out of it. Because I have, and this book has changed my life, and I'll, I'll continue to share its good message. So hope you have an amazing day. Love you all. And we'll talk to you next week.